there is benefit for deed. People in the supplication of almsgiving of the living. Sorry, there is a benefit for dead people in the supplication and almsgiving of the living. We believe that when the person makes dua for a dead person, there is benefit. We believe when the person makes sadaqah on behalf of a dead person, there is a benefit. Ahl Sunnah agreed that the dead benefit from the acts of the living in two ways. They benefit first from the things to which they had contributed in their lives and second from the prayers of the Muslims for their forgiveness as well as from their charity and hajj. As for the other acts of worship associated with one's person like fasting, praying, reading the Quran and remembering Allah, dhikr, Abu Hanifa, Ahmad, and the majority of the elders believe that their benefits reach the dead. However, in the opinions of Ash-Shafi and Malik, as they are known to people, their benefits do not reach the dead. Things like good deeds, you want to fast and pass the reward of that fasting to someone who is dead. You want to read Quran and pass the reward of that reading to the, someone who is dead. You want to do any remembrance, any good deed, and pass the reward to the one who is dead. There is a difference in opinion whether this is going to reach or does not reach. It's going to benefit the person who did it, definite. Whether it's going to reach or not, that's a different story. So all the Ahl Sunnah believe that the dead benefits from dua and sadaqah. These two, all Ahl Sunnah believe in. So it became part of our Aqidah. So no one can come and say, no, if you make Sadaqah on behalf of someone, it will not reach him. Because all Ahl Sunnah agree on that. The hadith of the Prophet Wasallam, when a man dies, his deeds come to an end. However, he continues to benefit from three things, a lasting charity. Here you go. Charity after his death. A good son who prays for him make dua and knowledge from which people benefit after him. The Quran states, those who came after them say, our Lord forgive us and our brethren who came before us into faith. Abu Dawood has reported from Uthman ibn Affan that the Prophet Wasallam stood by a grave when a dead body was placed in it and said to people around him, pray that Allah forgives your brother and that he does not wa waver when he is questioned. This is going to take place now. So this is an evidence that when the person is in the grave, just being buried, and now the questioning will happen, we make dua that will benefit him. Visitors to the grave should also say some prayers, dua. In his hadith, Muslim has recorded from Buraida ibn al husayb that the Prophet ﷺ used to teach them at the time of visiting graves, one should say, peace be upon you, people of Iman and Islam who are in these graves, we will also be joining you when Allah wills. We pray for peace and rest for you and for us. Assalamu alaikum dara qawmin. Mu'mineen. Al-Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Aisha that a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and said, My mother died suddenly and could not leave a will. If she could have, she would have bequeathed, I believe, some charity. Will she benefit if I give some in charity on her behalf? The Prophet Sallallahu said, yes. So it's in Bukhari and Muslim. That's it. For us, it is part of our belief. Al-Bukhari has another hadith in his Sahih reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas that the mother of Sa'ad ibn Ubadah died while he was not present. Sa'ad came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Messenger of Allah, my mother died while I was not present. If I give something in charity on her behalf, will it benefit her? The Prophet ﷺ said, yes. Whereupon Sa'ad said, bear witness that I give my garden attached to our house in charity for her. 
Regarding fasting, there is a hadith in the two sahihs reported by Aisha that the Prophet said, whoever dies and fails to fast for any days, his or her wali may fast on his behalf. That's where some of the scholars say that they can. And this is in Bukhari and Muslim. As for Hajj, Al-Bukhari has a hadith in his Sahih reported by Ibn Abbas that a woman from the tribe of Juhayna came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, My mother vowed to make Hajj but could not do so and died. May I make the hall for her, the Prophet, the Hajj for her? The Prophet ﷺ said, Yes, you may do it for her. Suppose she had a debt to pay, would you not pay it for her? So the debt of Allah should be paid before every other debt. So, because she vowed that she wants to go to Hajj. She died before going, so that's a debt. So she needs to fulfill. The Ummah agreed that the debts of the dead can be paid even by a stranger and from any money, even if not from his legacy. This is supported by the Hadith that when Abu Qatada paid two dinars, which he had promised to pay on behalf of a dead person, the Prophet ﷺ said, now his body is safe from the fire. So Abu Qatada is actually paid off a debt of a dead person. He did not know, he did not, that's not from his money. This is consistent with the principles of Sharia and can be derived from them through analogy, qiyas, the benefit of an act is the right of its doer. If he wants to transfer it to his brother, why should he be forbidden? when he is not forbidden from giving a gift to someone from his money or paying off someone's debts after his death. When the lawgiver, al-shari'ah, has said that the benefits of fasting may reach the dead, he has, in fact, indicated that the benefits of reading the Qur'an and another act of worship may also reach them. So this is an example. When the shari'ah said it can benefit, that's an act of ibadah. That's why the group of scholars that said every act of ibadah can be applied. Then fasting, reading the Quran, anything else can be applied. Fasting is abstaining intentionally from food, drink, and the like. The Sharia has clearly stated that its benefits can be passed on to the dead. There is then no reason why the benefits of reading the Quran and other intentional acts of worship may not be passed on. That's why. Still, it's a matter of difference in opinion between the scholars. However, to hire people to recite the Quran and other and offer the benefits to the deceased is an unjustified innovation. People, they hire people, give them money, come during the first three days after the death, read Quran, read Quran on the on behalf of that person. You read. Why are you hiring someone to read? This is actually unjustified bid'ah. None of the elders did it, nor has any imam justified it. One might say that in the case of hajj and fasting, we have the word of the Prophet ﷺ, but we don't have anything from him about reading the Qur'an. The answer, sir, is that the Prophet ﷺ did not himself expound these practices. He only responded to the question of people. So when people asked him, he answered. So he was not asked about reading the Qur'an. So he answered about the question that he was asked.